Welcome back. All right. Yesterday, we took a look at Rotten Richie and the Ultimate Dare and really dug deep into our schema in regards to hockey, ballet, and siblings. Okay. Now, with looking at our schema of siblings, we know that siblings don't always get along. They kind of have a hard time. And especially these siblings, Richie and Trisha, they're very competitive. And they're showing them, hey, my sport is harder than your sport and you can't do it. So now Trisha has dared Richie to be in her ballet recital. And in return, he dared her to play one hockey game. Okay, so let's take a look then through the lens. We're looking at our schema about um, brother and sister relationships. And let's think about, I wonder if their relationship will change because of this dare. Something to think about, right? We know that in good stories that relationships do change from beginning, middle to end. We've already studied that as a class and as a grade. But let's think about that through the lens of schema. So how do they feel about each other right now? Kind of like my sport's better than yours, I'm better than you, that kind of thing. So basically right now they don't get along very well. Let's read on and see if their relationship changes and if their schema changes based on their knowledge of hockey and ballet and if their schema changes, will it change my schema? Okay, let's get to work. We read this page yesterday. Let's continue. The next week, all of Fremont Elementary School was there with the game. For the game. <laughs> Not with the game, for the game. Even Mr. Thomas, the principal. He and all of the teachers were in the front row. I was a little nervous. The coach's wife helped me suit up in the closet of the locker room. Jeez, this stuff is heavier than it looks, I said to her. Oh, something about her schema of hockey is changing. Well, dear, this is a contact sport, and we have to protect your bones from breaking and your teeth from getting knocked out. I was right, their teeth do get knocked out, she said cheerfully. Bones? Teeth? I began to wonder if I had bitten off more than I could chew. That was assuming I'd even be able to do that after this game. <laughs> okay. By the time Richie helped me out onto the ice with the rest of the team, I could hardly stand up. But the more I skated around, the better I felt. A whistle blew and everyone cheered for our team. The Battle Creek Beavers! I raised my hand to wave and fell flat on my behind. It was slippery out there. One of the beavers helped me up. That's when I saw the team we were playing against explode onto the ice. My stomach turned. The Saginaw Sonics, each and every one of them must have weighed 400 pounds. I think her schema is starting to change about hockey already. Face off, the referee called out as the two captains faced off. They looked real mean at each other. The referee was about to drop the puck between them. Where do I go, Richie? I called out to my brother be down the line. Just stay out of the way. When that puck hits the ice, the race is on. Then the ref dropped it. There was a blur of sticks, flashing jerseys, and pinging skate blades. I headed straight for the wall to hang on. I saw the puck heading for me. It bounced off the wall and stopped right next to me. I just stood and looked at it. Hit it! Hit it! The beavers yelled at me. I heard what sounded like a locomotive and saw the Saginaw Sonics closing in. Boom! They plastered me against the wall. Their sticks zinged, banged, and cracked as they tried to get the puck. Finally, a whistle blew, and they piled off of me. All that padding sure didn't seem to help much. You let him body check, you twerp! I told you to stay out of the way! My brother yelled as he zoomed by. Poor thing. Getting beat up over there. The teams faced off over and over again. Now I knew what to do. Stay away from both teams. I saw Richie line up the perfect shot at the Sonics goal. Just as he was about to slap it in, one of the Sonics put out his stick and tripped him. I steamed right up to that big old Sonic and beamed him with my stick. You're not playing fair, I screamed. I heard a whistle blow. 
The referee grabbed me, opened the side gate, and threw me onto a bench. High sticking, he bellowed. Penalty goes against the Beavers, number 12, five minutes in the penalty box. Oh, so that's what was happening. This was sweet. All I had to do was trip a Sonic with my stick and I would be sent to the penalty box. I could stay in here for the whole game. By golly, my plan worked like a charm. I spent almost the entire game in the penalty box. By the third period, the score was 4-4. Four to four. Our team had played a great game. The Beavers outskated, outshot, and outplayed the Sonics on every front. And just as we were going... Just as we were going to score the winning goal, all of the Sonics piled onto all the beavers and started a fight. My schema is matching so far with this. <laughs> when the fight was over, almost all of the Sonics, except the goalie, were in the penalty box. All of the beavers were too. You're back out on the ice, 12. Let's go, the ref barked as he opened the door and pushed me out. Great. There I was, all by myself, out on that ice with the biggest, meanest, ugliest Sonic of all. It was their shot, and I alone had to guard our goal. I hung onto the net for dear life. The crowd was dead silent, the puck was dropped, and that Sonic barreled down the ice heading straight for me. I heard him make a slap shot, then I saw him leap into the air and land right on top of the net. He bounced off. Then he just lay there, out cold. That's when I felt it. I had the puck in my hand. He hadn't made the goal. I caught it. The crowd exploded. Skate the puck to their goal, twerp. You have 30 seconds to do it, I heard my brother yell. I steadied the puck with my stick and pushed it ahead of me as fast as I could. The Sonic's goal seemed miles away. The clock was ticking. The crowd was calling out the seconds. Then the puck got away from me. I slid back up to it, closed my eyes, and slapped that puck as hard as I could. The buzzer sounded at the end of the game. It was all over. When I opened my eyes, there it was. The puck smack in the Sonic's net. I had scored the winning point. That's my little sister, I heard my brother call out as the crowd roared. I bet she is so proud of herself. Don't you think? Okay, now what do you think she thinks about hockey at this time? I bet she thinks it's harder than what she thought of before. Her schema folder of hockey has now changed because she has experienced hockey. Just like you and me, our schema changes when we experience something or when we do something my schema of um, elementary school when I was a kid is definitely different now that I'm an adult and I'm a teacher. I've got a new schema added in there about what elementary school is like because I've experienced it in a different way. So our friend here, Trisha, had some ideas about hockey. She's seen her brother play, but she had a different schema added to it when she experienced it herself. Very cool. And another thing I noticed is that their relationship is starting to change. What did he say at the end? That's my little sister. I think he said it with pride, don't you think? So we're starting to see a bit of a change here with the relationship. Why don't we write some of that down? I think it would be a good idea. So I've created another graphic organizer for you guys, and it's kind of like a T-chart, but it goes the other way, okay? So we have, I wrote on the top, Richie and Trisha, character relationships, and we have beginning and end. Sometimes I do middle end as well, but I feel like getting there, we'll just talk about the beginning and the end, okay? We're starting to see some changes though. So actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change it to middle. I'm gonna add a middle. That's what teachers do, we change our minds. <laughs> okay, so now I have beginning, middle, end. All right, and your uh, graphic organizer on Seesaw will match this with beginning, middle, end. Okay, so in the beginning, um, Trisha and Richie didn't weren't getting along. They were kind of they were very competitive, and they said my sport's better than your sport. So we're gonna write that. They were very competitive and thought. Their sport 
was better than the other. Better than the other. Okay, now it's a good time if you need to pause it and write this. They were very competitive and thought their sport was better than the other. So ballet is better than hockey, hockey's better than ballet. Oh, oh, and they also said, you can't do it, it's too hard for you. You can't do it, is what they said to each other. If I put that in quotes, that's what they said to each other. You can't do it, right? That is exactly what they said to each other. All right. Okay. But in the middle, something just happened. After Trisha played hockey, Richie said, That's my little sister. He was starting to show that he was proud of her. Hmm. So we'll write that. Richie was proud of his little sister when she won the hockey game for his team. Okay, if you need to pause it here, you can. It says, Richie was proud of his little sister when she won the hockey game for his team. Now, we could speculate that their relationship may have changed to be worse if she had lost the game. I don't know. So now that we've thought about how her schema now has changed from playing hockey, instead of just watching hockey, she's experienced it, so her schema folder now has added new things to it. And guess what? So is my schema folder added new things to it in terms of hockey um, and brother-sister relationships. They're getting along for right now. He's proud of her. I mean, that's really cool that an older brother is proud of a little sister. I think that's neat. And we also saw how character relationships are starting to change. Pretty awesome. Can't wait to see what tomorrow looks like. Don't forget to fill this out. Bye, guys.